In 2011, Tesla refined the Model S after completing their Alpha and Beta stage of development and showcased their car to the world during an October event. The production lines have been mostly complete and customer deliveries are now fast approaching. So will Tesla be able to deliver on its promise? Let's find out. Since the IPO on June 30th of 2010, Tesla stock has been on a wild roller coaster ride and 2012 would be more of the same. January 13th started out like any other day. Tesla stock was trading around the $28 mark. And then word came out that Peter Rawlinson, the vice president and chief engineer, was leaving Tesla to attend personal matters in the UK. And then on the very same day, news breaks that Nick Sampson, director of vehicle and chassis engineering, had recently left the company and investors freaked out. Panic selling commenced and by day's end, the stock was down 19%. The very next day, the stock gaps up 17% at open. By the 26th of January, Tesla stock trades higher than before the large drop. Also in January, Tesla announces that they have stopped manufacturing the Tesla Roadster and that the car was no longer for sale in the United States, while international deliveries would continue. Elon Musk gives us an insight of what the future may hold for the Roadster. It's obviously the, the first viable electric car of one era. There will be at some point a new generation Roadster. So my only comment, that's going to come after the third generation vehicle. You know, that, that pushes it out probably uh, about four years or so. So while the Roadster was slowly being retired, Tesla unveiled their newest vehicle, the Model X. All right, well, welcome everyone. With the Model X, what's the problem that we're trying to solve? Well, minivans have lots of room, but not much style. SUVs are big on the outside, but they tend to be small on the inside. The minivans and SUVs have been trying for years to overcome these problems. Here we see the first uh, attempt at that. <laughs> not bad, not bad. And people kept iterating over the decades. It's not clear it got better. <laughs> and then, you know, we've got things like, the, say, the Audi Q7, which is, you know, it's not bad. We have one here, so you can take a look at it and compare it to the Model, the Model X. Um, and and I, I actually have uh, an Audi Q7 personally. Um, and. And then you, you, you can also have things like, like say, the, the Honda Odyssey minivan. I, I don't have one of those. <laughs> so you've got, you've got functionality with the minivan. You've got style with the, with the SUV. And then what, what's the third missing element? Well, how about performance? So what if, what if you could have a car that has more functionality than a minivan, more style, than an SUV, and more performance than a sports car. That's the Model X. So one of the main inventions of the Model X is something that we call the Falcon Wing Doors. So, and, and driving the car is Franz von Holzhausen, our head of design. <laughs> and then we've also got uh, six of the key uh, engineers and designers behind the Model X. So this is a roadster in a garage. It's actually my garage. And this is the Model X. So the, the doors don't go any higher than a normal SUV rear hatchback would go. So if, if you can open the, the, the hatch on an SUV, you can open the, the Falcon Wing doors. <laughs> There's something in the front you didn't expect. <laughs> I didn't expect it either. Um, so uh, the other major invention associated with, with the Model X is dual motor all wheel drive. So we actually have a motor in the front and a motor in the rear. And also does something with respect to performance. 
So let's say a, a car you're probably familiar with, the Porsche 911 Carrera. There's zero to 60 in 4.6 seconds. Model X, 4.4 seconds. So you've got something that's the size of an SUV, it's faster than a Porsche. Model, S, Model X gives you functionality, style, and performance. There's no other car like this. <laughs> Reservations will be done the same way as the Model S. We'll have the signature series and then uh, general production. We'll start production towards the end of next year, probably deliver a few units, and then uh, bulk production will start in 2014. Come up on stage. You're welcome to come on stage and check the car out and have a great party. So while the Model X was a hit, Model S deliveries were now just months away. And how were the production lines progressing? We have all of the factory machinery in place. We have the vast majority of the tooling in place. There are a few stamping dies that are sort of stragglers due to late changes, and those are coming in next month. But really, the machinery is in place, and it's just a question of ironing out any bug with the overall manufacturing system. If you can think of the factory as sort of like a big machine with the many subcomponents, effectively, it's getting that, that machine to work effectively at the subsystem level, and then in the transition from one subsystem to the next, and then being able to kind of spool it up and go at a, a greater and greater speed. And we really want to be super sensitive to the quality of the product, and our aspiration is to deliver cars that, that have zero defects. On May 9th, Tesla announced Q1 earnings. Revenues decline again, as roadsters are no longer sold in the United States, while losses continue to grow, as large amounts are spent getting the Fremont factory and the Model S sedan ready for customer deliveries. Cash on hand drops again to $283 million. The stock, by the way, up 28% year over year, but there's a pretty big short position on it. It's doing pretty well, actually, given that we're so, we have such a huge short position. Um, in fact, I, I think the short position may be as high as, as one can actually go. I, I think that they're literally hit the ceiling on, on the short position. The shorts are, are in it to the hilt. And you um, believe they are 100% wrong? You know, I, I think we're, it's very unwise to be shorting Tesla. Uh, I mean, it's just very unwise. I think there is there is a tsunami of hurt coming for the for the short those holding a short short position. Okay. It's going to be very very unpleasant. I advise people to exit <laughs> while there is time. During the start of June, the first two Model S vehicles get delivered. The first of which goes to Tesla board member Steve Jurvetson. Ready? Yeah, I am. Is it? Oh, that's, that's it. the handoff. Our first Model S owner. <laughs> While the second goes to none other than Elon Musk. The goal here was to allow a couple of weeks of final testing prior to deliveries commencing. We also find out that Tesla cracked over 10,000 reservations for the Model S. Now, keep in mind, while the reservation amounts are not fully refundable. There is no guarantee that reservation holders will purchase the Model S, so quality and reliability will be extremely important early on. One of those reservation holders was Elon Musk's cousin and CEO from Solar City, Lyndon Rive. Great, so what number are you on the list? 808. 808, <laughs> lucky 808. So, so being Elon Musk's cousin doesn't get you to the top 10 on the list? I'll tell you, um, so, so this is um, uh, back to your earlier question about the family. Being Elon's cousin gets me no extra benefit out of that. He just expects more uh, in terms of performance uh, of, of solar city. So it's nothing but the best is acceptable. Um, I sent him an email saying, hey, Elon, I want to get a, um, uh, a sedan. Uh, c can you uh, organize something for me? I'd, I'd really like something. He sends me a response. He says, yes, yeah, absolutely. Go to tesla.com. Uh, the experience should be very quick. Wow, that was all he could do for you. Yeah. <laughs> get, so, in, get in line. Get in line. On June 22nd, Tesla held an event to deliver the first Model S vehicles to customers. George Blankenship starts the event enthusiastically announcing it's time to deliver the Model S. Jerry Brown, the then governor of California, makes a speech praising California and Tesla. Next up, J.B. Straubel comes on stage and discusses Tesla's vision and the amazing team Tesla has built. Franz von Holzhausen then covers details as to what makes the Model S so amazing. Then, Elon Musk takes to the stage 
and talks about how the Model S will break the illusion that gas cars are superior to electric cars and then thanks the team that made this possible. And then it was time. Are you ready? It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time to start delivering Model S. One of the things that's uh, important is, is presentation. Um, so give Jeff his, his, his uh, car keys. You, you want to sort of open that up. Um, and so we, wow. the, the car key is actually a, a, a small representation of the car. Um, and then if you want to open the trunk, you can just press the trunk and you can to open the, 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 the front, you can just press the front. And to lock and unlock the car, you can just press the hood. So it's like a little tiny version of the car. Anyway. Amazing. Beautiful. Thanks. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next, Nancy, come on up. There she is. There you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to say this is for Elon Musk and the entire Tesla team. We're so proud of you. Thank you for making a beautiful car. Thank you for making a future we can be proud of. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Please open this up. So there you have it. Tesla pulls it off. With deliveries beginning slightly ahead of schedule, the focus now turns to how fast Tesla can scale production to 20,000 units per year. Reliability, quality and manufacturing are now life and death for Tesla. And the story continues in part 2 of 2012. Thank you to all the Patreons that support the channel, along with Bradford Ferguson from Halter Ferguson Financial. And remember, all content is opinion only and not financial advice. So till next time, I'll catch you guys soon.